That's right, I got a new boat. Folks over at Ranger contacted me and they said, hey man, would you like one of our newest models of 2018? I said, hell yeah, send it right over. She just arrived today, so today I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown on my brand new Northern rig. I'm kidding, sort of, kind of. Actually, for quite some time, I've always wanted a John boat. And as a kid, that was kind of my first boat ever. You know how I made that one video about my uh, my slow with the 60 horsepower Merc on the back? Well, I lied. That actually wasn't my first ever John boat. This was my first ever John boat. I bought this thing from a country club for $100. Actually, for quite some time, I did a little bit of a project, a restoration project on this boat, until I realized that it was completely and utterly fun. Thus, I had to scrap the whole video project, sell the boat for like $5, and here we are now. Fast forward to age 22, and I have bought my first ever John boat. This is a brand new John boat. I didn't buy this thing from some hunky dunky little country club that was very much used. This is brand new, never before touched, never before fished off of. This thing is very soft. So today I'm going to explain to you the benefits of having a John boat over, you know, a 22 foot fiberglass rig that goes 186 miles per hour, that is fuel injected, and that runs on rocket fuel. I'm going to explain to you guys why it is cool to have a John boat and not cool to have a big boat. But before we do that, I need to install some bits and pieces that are over here to the 12 foot John boat. And within that, I'm going to explain to you guys why I got this boat and a little bit about it. We're gonna do a little intro to the brand new boat, which my dad doesn't have a name. So if you guys would like to name it, write down there in the comments. I wanna hear what you guys have to say. All right, let's begin this little review. Just like that, I've installed everything that I need and want onto this boat. Let's do some explaining. In the rear of my 12 foot aluminum John boat, we've got the workhorse. This is a Minn Kota 55 pound thrust, 42 inch shaft, Traxxas. This is the driving force of the entire rig itself. And as you may notice, I actually removed the factory prop, which is this miserable looking thing right here. And I put on this wedge two weedless prop, which fits real snug onto this motor. The reason why I got this is a lot of the ponds that I'm trying to fish this year up in Illinois are covered, thick, constricted with really thick grass. And I want something that's going to plow through that with ease. So with this prop, it actually will increase my power. It'll save me some battery and I'll get through like lily pads and coontail and all that good stuff. All right, let's move on. Powering this motor, we have a 12 volt battery system. Simple and straightforward. I got this in a battery tray mainly because this boat could get a little messy, could get a little wet, and I don't want this battery to be sitting in a pool of water. Electricity and water don't necessarily mix. Yeah, you know why. This is where I keep my rods. It's not a rod rack traditionally, but it's a good little spot. I can lay them down and they're not gonna get crushed. I think the max amount of rods I should probably bring on this boat is maybe like four to five, maybe a little more of that, I don't know. I say I'm only gonna bring five rods in this boat, but trust me, you'll watch a video where I've got the entire arsenal out on this little tiny rig. Down yonder, we got the portable charging system. Now this is important mainly because of the fact that it is portable. That's big, and I'll explain later here in a second. The main theme of this rig, this boat right here, is that it's not only inexpensive and not only easy to use, but it is portable. I wanted a boat that I could take off the trailer and carry to a body of water with ease. I think this boat weighs a little over 100 pounds. For someone like me, I can manage this boat through some woods, through a, a steep slope or something like that, but I can also launch it on this trailer right here too. So having everything on this boat being portable is key, whether that be the battery, the charger, or the motor, which detaches. Here we've got a backup paddle. This is my one horsepower paddle, no charging necessary. Then we've got the net, which you can tell is fairly small. I think Flair let me borrow this one a long time ago. And we've got the ancient Japanese push pole. You probably think I'm kidding, but this is key, especially when you're fishing skinny water. The nice thing about this boat, and why I love it so much, is it is a flat 
bottom, meaning I can get into very, very skinny water. In fact, I can get into virtually the skinniest water. I can bring this thing up on an inch of water and I can't use my motor when I'm in those situations. So I've got this doohickey right here. This of course isn't a installation to the actual rig, but I should talk about it. I'm gonna be doing a lot of fishing solo. So having this thing on the boat actually around me and on me at all times is something that is very essential. Something that I recommend if you're gonna fish off a John boat or a kayak or pretty much any boat for that matter, it's good to have a life vest on you at all times when you're by yourself, especially because you have no plan B. If you fall in the water, you're dead. You're dead. That's just how it works. So this is going to help me stay alive if I do happen to end up <laughs> you know, falling in the water, which you may know is not something I am seldom to doing. To talk about some more boring stuff, this boat is on a trailer that fits up to a 16 foot aluminum boat. So if I find that I don't like the 12 foot and I wanna to go to a 14 or 16, I can do so without switching out the trailer. That's something I made very sure of. I'm pretty satisfied with this thing, but I haven't fished off of it yet. And personally, I don't know how I'm going to like it. I may want something that's a little bit bigger or maybe a little bit smaller. So that's why I got the trailer that fits from 10 foot to 16, which is actually really crazy and really nice. Over here, we have a boat cover by Bass Pro Shop. I really wanna take care of this boat and I wanna make it something that will last long. The boat that I bought when I was like 17 years old, it was old, it was decrepit, it had not been taken care of and that really pissed me off. It made me mad that someone didn't take care of this boat because I knew if I had a boat like that, I would treat it with such respect and be so careful with it. So this is my chance now to treat this little JB with love and kindness. Even though it's an $800 boat, I still wanna treat it like it's a $81,000 22 foot fiberglass rig. And now on to the most important installment to this rig. Take a look at that. One thing I really want to stay away from this boat is doing too much to it. Again, it's all about portability. So I don't really think I'm going to build a deck here because that just means I'm gonna add more wood to it or more aluminum and that's gonna make it heavier. And while adding a deck may allow me to put a foot pedal trolling motor, which is really nice, I also, over anything, want this thing to be easy to carry. Saving on weight is huge. It's just like a race car. Race cars don't have a rear seat, they just have really one and the passenger is for the most time removable so think of this as a john boat race car i want to reduce on weight so i can have a faster and a more portable rig while a lot of anglers out there especially on youtube are making these big decks which i think are really cool by the way i don't want to do it to this boat so therefore i've adapted <laughs> to installing this thing right here. This is the craziest thing. When I saw this at the Cabela's that I bought this boat at, I was like pumped. I was like, this is perfect. This is gonna save me. I can now be all the way up here and move it and fish basically from this angle. I don't have to be like all the way back here where the handle originally is. Like imagine if you're fishing from the back of your Nitro or Ranger or Skate or something like that, that would suck. Everyone wants to fish closest to the front because that's where the action's happening. Tiller game's strong. Check this thing out, man. This thing is rad. It looks stupid, I know, but trust me, it will save me so much headache out in the water. Okay, so now that you guys got the rundown of the rig, it's not too special, it's not too crazy, but let me see if I can sway your mind and explain to you guys why I think a boat like this one is way cooler and way more versatile than a boat like this one. <laughs> okay, let's get down to it. The reason why you clicked on this video, why I think, my personal opinion, a John boat is better to have than a bass boat in specific situations. Let me just throw a little asterisk right there. In specific situations. This argument is based on where you live, okay? And I'm gonna base this upon where I live. The Midwest, excluding the land of the 10,000 lakes, that being Minnesota, there is not a whole lot of big lakes around here. Sure, Chicago bumps right up against Lake Michigan. That is a great lake. Yes, I know that requires a big boat, but I'm talking about the general fisheries around here in Northern Illinois. For those of you guys who live here, you know there is not that much big water. In the big water that's around here, there aren't too many public boat launches, areas where you can drop the boat in easily with the trailer. So that's leading my first argument. These boats will get into areas that guys with big boats will never be able to touch unless they have a rig like this. Some of the best places that I've ever fished were small, tiny little public bodies of water that have only kayak launching only. Places where you can only put a canoe or a kayak in or a John boat like this one. And personally, while I like kayak fishing, I like to be able to stand up fully and not feel like I'm about to die every time I make a cast or set the hook. That's the reason why I got this John boat is I can carry this thing by myself. I don't need a second person and I don't have to traditionally launch it like this. So here's the second reason maintenance and cost. I guarantee if you purchase a John boat to fish off of, you will literally never take this thing in to get fixed or worked on. Okay, now let me ask this. 
for all of you guys out there who have a big boat, whether it be a deep V fiberglass, a 16 foot aluminum bass boat, maybe a Boston whaler, whatever rig you may have, ask yourself, how many times have you taken that boat in? Some of you guys may say, well, I've never taken my boat in. You are one of the few lucky individuals that don't have to continuously put money into this massive pit. You may get a dent in it, it's not going to explode. You hit a freaking log going like 20 miles per hour, 30 miles per hour in a fiberglass boat, you are done. There's a lot less worry with a boat like this. You know, you could slide it down a hill, get it muddy, bang it up against rocks, brush, doesn't matter. And the initial cost of this boat that I got right here was $836. I think, which in my opinion for a rig like this, that's inexpensive. And what I would suggest even more so than buying a new John boat is going on eBay or Craigslist and buying a used one because you can get an even better deal. I was just goofy and I wanted a brand new one. The third reason I have for you guys is when you're out on a big body of water, let's say, you know, your buddy Greg, who has a 21 foot Ranger who is just cooking ass, freaking trimmed up, booking it down the lake, going 81.5 miles per hour. He's gonna get to the spot before you can because you're in your little dinghy with a five horse and you're just screwed. You're like, think, oh, screw this. Like, you know, Greg has the nicer boat here. Sure, Greg's gonna get to the spot faster than you. He may have more room for beverages and snacks and his 300 fishing rods, but you know what he doesn't have? He doesn't have the ability to get into that back cut that is overgrown and is entangled with brush. That is where these boats come into play. So let's say you do launch on a big lake with big boats and it's, it's fair game. This boat is a backwater burner, meaning you're gonna be able to get into those tight cuts. So you're gonna be able to take this boat into very tight corners, literally up and under brush, things that Greg can't get into. You know why? Because Greg is worried about his gel coat. Oh my God, I don't, you know, kiddo, I don't know if we're gonna get that close to the bank. Uh, this glossy paint job, it looks nice the way it is. No, Greg, no, no, listen to me, Greg. There's nothing wrong with a big boat, but if you have a little boat like this, you're gonna be able to get into some serious nooks and crannies where those big fish lives. And I can't tell you how many times I've been in a kayak or a small John boat, or even like a, a tiny like 14 foot boat, where I've had to go all the way back to the cut or all the way back in the area where most bass boats can't get into. And I've like slayed them because no one else thinks to go back there. They're worried about damaging their boat. Like that blows my mind. Like, dude, this is a tool, use it as is. It's not a freaking Lamborghini, okay? A boat is a boat. You take it wherever there's water. And if there's bass back there that need to be caught, you bring your boat back there, regardless of your gel coat. I'm talking to you, Greg, okay? Listen, buddy. So, now it's your turn. I wanna hear your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below. What do you think? Big boat or little boat? Which do you prefer and why? That's going to do it for today's video. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so right down there and be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it or maybe if you even hated it drop it a like too that, that'd be sick as well thank you for the view i appreciate it so much go out there catch some fish the weather is beautiful it's amazing up north i hope you guys are cranking toads catching fish being safe and as always folks keep fishing never stop